We're located about 100 kilometers off the Pacific coast of Costa Rica, where the Caribbean plate meets the Cocos plate, and it's an area of active subduction. With this expedition, we are trying to advance autonomous vehicles and, and automated uh, mission planning in a real-world environment, a fairly complex and challenging environment for use in oceanographic exploration and also as an analog for exploration in space. What we're trying to do is to, to push the limits of the glider to have a better localization, to be more close to structures and to be able to stay under the water for much longer in time. With the non-deterministic missions, we set very high-level goals and tell the robot, these are our objectives. Now you figure it out how to go about uh, constructing your mission plan. Uh, automatically update that to a glider over a satellite link. You could think of that as like using Twitter to express your entire mission plan and then have those vehicles go out way beyond the horizon and conduct the mission. We're making uh, three-dimensional uh, scene reconstructions of the ROV's work area and using that along with feedback from the manipulator arms that the pilots are using to use that to understand the sort of best practices to be able to take samples uh, without um, uh, causing harm to the robot or to the environment. So we've been working on an algorithm that will take a bunch of science data that we've got, uh, try to interpret it, and then generate uh, waypoints that we can give to the robot. They are taking our notes, the geological notes, and using their maths, and they will let us know that, okay, we found the same geomorphological features without using the geologist. This is really impressive. It's fantastic. Eventually, the algorithm uh, did give us some waypoints that when we went down Sebastian, uh, we were able to find a very active seepage. That was really exciting. And, oh, wow, there's lots of bubbles on the screen right now. So that was so impressive because we were so impatient to find cold seeps. And when we are just in front of us, we say, wow, this is really amazing. We found tube rooms. You have life down there. We found a lot of octopus and corals and sharks and so on. I think this is amazing. And what we are doing is really very special. Oceanographic exploration and discovery requires that we operate in relatively unknown environments, and it's similar in space. And those risks, while they're significant for oceanography, for space exploration, you really only get uh, a limited number of chances, in part because sometimes you need the planets to align in order <laughs> to get there. We're building technologies that allow us to do more with less, and uh, if you think about the history of oceanography, what we are doing right now would have been unthinkable even 30 years ago. By pushing forward on the technology, we're able to uh, greatly expand our ability to observe as humans to observe our world.